All right. Um, for the last project in uh, the Illustrator unit, you're going to have a choice between two big projects. Um, this is your first choice. Uh, you're going to have the option here to design a typeface. And a typeface is all 26 characters of the alphabet um, in upper or lower case. Uh, you do not have to do both upper and lower case. Um, I just want 26 characters of the alphabet. Um, it's optional to do numbers or punctuation or if, if you want as well. And uh, you have complete freedom as to which approach you use. I highly recommend you use Live Trace and um, you know Photoshop and Illustrator to kind of clean up your drawing and, and refine it. Um, at the end of this video I'll demonstrate um, uh, both methods for creating a font, uh, a method where you use Live Trace and a method where you use a modular system which is another option available to you here. Um, I, I kinda want you to create your own font. Try to stay away from uh, you know, uh, existing ideas or existing fonts. Um, you know, y you can use them as inspiration, but try to make something original. Uh, these are the parts of letters. Uh, I may use some of this terminology when talking to you about your designs. Most often, I will use the term uh, ascender or descender uh, and uh, serif. Um, uh, your Descender, of course, is any part of the letter that dips below the X height. Uh, a serif is that little doohickey that hangs off of a letter, and that's a big stylistic choice. Here you can see um, both ascenders and descenders in the word sphinx, the ascender being something higher than the X height, and the X height is just the height of the letter X, or a lowercase letter X. Um, of course, you're only going to make an uppercase or lowercase uh, alphabet, so you know you don't really have to worry too much about this. But it is a design consideration how high that ascender or descender is. If you keep it uniform, that helps with uh, legibility. Uh, another design choice is whether or not you make your font proportional or monospace. The difference being, monospace, uh, the same amount of space is used for each letter. And proportional, certain letters like you know the letter I are obviously narrower than other letters, and uh, this helps with um, legibility. And it was mainly a concern when uh, typewriters were in use because typewriter keys had to be kind of the same size um, to to work properly with the machine. Um, when you design your letters, really think about the essence of the letters. The letters we have in our alphabet today have evolved from just variation after variation after variation and you know font or the appearance of that letter was a huge part of it uh, if you don't have some essence of that letter in there it won't read as that letter when you combine it uh, to make a word so you know really consider the core fundamental like essence or form of that letter before you start designing uh, here's an example of a bunch of different letters from a bunch of different fonts combined here. I, I show you this example just to kind of remind you that you want to try to keep it unified. Uh, that's usually your best bet. Um, you can get wild and crazy though, but uh, it, it's, it's best if you keep it within a sort of theme or a sort of feel to it. We're not actually going to physically make a usable font. Um, the software to create usable fonts is expensive and then a lot of the free options uh, either probably don't install on these computers or are just a little bit too time con consuming for this particular project but if you go home and do some research I believe there's a resource in the project folder there are quite a few free font creation programs that you can use um, one that I highly recommend if you just want to play around with it is uh, FontStruct that is online and you construct the entire font online uh, it's a really fun program to use lots of editing tools in your browser and you know users have created a, a thousands of really cool looking fonts using that um, but this is a whole nother uh, basket of eggs that I just don't want to get into with you guys when considering your font design uh, you know there are a lot of options but um, 
the next couple slides here are just going to walk you through some of the more famous uh, typefaces that we know and use today. Helvetica here being one of the most commonly used ones simply because it's so easy to read. Um, I don't necessarily care what design decisions you make so long as it's uh, a legible alphabet and so long as you have 26 characters. Um, at the end of this uh, brief video here, I uh, will walk you through kind of how to um, create a font from drawing and create one from uh, modular shapes. So uh, stick with me or skip to that portion of the video if you want to kind of see how to do that. One of the other options you have for the design a typeface assignment is to create your font using a modular system. Uh, modular systems just refer to systems that are comprised of small little modules uh, that combine to make different parts. So in one of your resources, one of your uh, resources here, there's a tutorial as to how to do or create a modular typeface. And I'm kind of going to walk you through sort of a simplified version of that. Uh, this is, again, just one of the options for this assignment. Your other option is to, of course, create a drawing and then use Live Trace and then clean up that Live Trace. Um, again, that tutorial, Convert a Drawing to Vectors, actually does deal with a sketch of some letters uh, for the typeface that I was creating at one point. Um, and it's the same set of kind of considerations except now we're using a different method instead of you know converting a drawing to vectors we're just going to use and create our own little modules uh, and create a modular typeface so just open up a file again first things first uh, you need to create create a file um, make sure you put your name on it and then you know typeface or some other thing related to the project and then um, turn on your guides and your or, uh, your ruler and your grid. So to turn on your grid, the hotkey for that is Control apostrophe. Um, and then uh, to turn on your rulers is uh, Control R. Okay. And then uh, you're going to want to turn on Snap to Grid so that your guides that you pull down snap to the grid. Uh, so hold down Shift Control apostrophe to snap to the grid. And uh, I'm going to zoom in toward the top here, and I'm going to make my font about two inches tall for now. Okay. So I'm going to drop a line down for the A sender and a, and a line down for the baseline. So this is the top of my letter and this will be the bottom of my letter. And then my letter itself, um, I think I'll make it fit inside of uh, a one inch square. So we'll make a pretty tall font here. Uh, you can make your dimensions any size you want. So I'm going to drag a guideline over there and a drag guideline right there. And then uh, within this, we can break it down even further. I can determine how wide my stems are and my curves for my bulls are going to be. So my stems will be a quarter of an inch here. Okay. And then uh, the bowl height, we'll just make that. And the first thing I'm going to create is just some, some basic parts for, you know, the letter letter O and then we can convert that to a bunch of other letters. So first things first, I'm going to make some parts, my uh, modules for my modular font. Um, so I'm going to make the stem first. I'm just going to use the regular old rectangle tool here. Uh, click and drag to line it up with my guides. And then I'm going to make sure that I set the color for my objects to a black fill uh, with no outline. Okay, And you're going to want to do the same. So here's my first module. I got my stem. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this over to the other side since we're creating the letter O. And then I'm going to make my module for the curve right here. And I can move this out of the way if I want. Uh, so I'm going to go to my pen tool. Okay. And make it flat on the bottom so that it connects with this part. And then I'm going to pull up a curve here. Curve right there. 
Okay, and then I'm going to click straight, straight. And then I'm going to start a curve out that way, and then finish with the curve right there. So there's my little curve module. Okay, and so what I can do with this is, is create the other side of my O. So I've got my stem right here. Okay, and I'm going to copy this over there. So I'm going to go to my reflect tool, uh, set the center point in the middle here. So click in the middle there, hold down the Alt key and then click and drag on that curve module and hold down shift so that it copies to the opposite side. So there's the top part of the curve of the O there. Okay, And then I would keep these consistent. I'd hold this down and, and copy it down here. And uh, then I'd reflect that again. Okay, And then reflect it again like that. Okay, So now I've got the letter O and I can continue to use these parts to create other letters within these uh, little one inch boxes here. So if I want I can pull out some more guides and I can create, uh, let's say I want to create the letter T. So letter T, we have a long, hold on, we have a long stem in the middle here. Okay, I can um, I can actually put my stems overlapping at the bottom, so I can do it like this. I can do Alt and then Alt like that, and then I can do that at the top. Alt click to uh, copy your parts. Okay, and then for the T, I can extend uh, the rest of the stem out here with just a basic rectangle if I want. So I'm going to switch back to my rectangle tool and just sort of create a little bit more of the stem there. So there's my letter T. And if I wanted to, I could actually, you know, copy these over to make some kind of heavy, top-heavy serifs if I wanted to. All right, I can create, uh, I can adjust the size of this, and then I can keep creating letters. So if I want to create like uh, the letter, the letter M, I can copy this core here. Okay, I probably wouldn't need this serif down here. All right, copy that over there. Okay, and then copy this, and then copy that whole set again. Okay, and then copy one of these serifs over there, and I have my M. Okay, and so as you can see there, just through using uh, like two parts that we've either mirror copied or rotated, uh, we can we can start to build all the letters of a font now. Obviously, the way these parts are designed determines how the font feels, and then you can create rules. So, like, let's say these two shapes aren't supposed to overlap like that. That could be a rule. So I could make sure that every time they're together like that, they only touch by the tips. They don't overlap. And that could be, like, part of the design there is that big, wide-open bowl. Um, I could also make it so that that changes depending on the needs of the letter. Um, I could make rules for you know, pretty much anything, like my stems uh, can't go past this line right here. So, you know, you always have to have a serif or leave it floating. Or, you know, I could break that rule and bring them all the way down and get rid of these serifs at the bottom. It's totally up to you how do you design your modular font and what rules you make for it and what pieces you make for it. Um, but uh, this is kind of a cool, flexible, fun way to create some really simple ideas. Uh, and I would try to make your modules a bit more impressive than mine. Obviously, I'm, I'm kind of cutting corners and going quick just for this uh, demonstration. So sketch out some ideas first and, and try to make some more interesting parts because uh, you're just basically copying those parts over and over again. If you don't like the parts you made, uh, you got to design that better.